Hello and welcome to the fifth part of my protein image sequence. I'm Neil Voss, an educator, structural biologist, and computer programmer. Today we are going to highlight the amino acids in the active site of a protein enzyme. Uh, my biochemistry students are required to uh, highlight the active site of chymotrypsin, PDBID 10XG. So I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to highlight the active site of a lysozyme. So I'm going to type in LYZ. I've started using the bio unit, um, which is supposedly the better representation of the PDB coordinates. So let's fetch uh, the PDB coordinates and make the window a little bit bigger. I do want to kind of say in space off to the side here. Uh, it's kind of an interesting protein structure that also has a very large ligand here in the middle. It's where, if this is a lysozyme, it breaks down the peptoglycan layer in the bacteria. Uh, but the first thing we'll do is we're going to hide all the uh, atoms so we can focus in on the protein in particular. Uh, and I thought, let's color it a nice cornflower blue. All right, so the lysozyme active site, which you probably got an idea of where it is based on the ligand, but maybe you have no idea where the active site. If I spin this around, you're probably completely lost at this point here. The ligand, lysozyme active site is mainly consists of two amino acids, aspartate uh, 52 and glutamate 35. So Whenever you put your mouse over a particular area of the protein, it'll tell you the number, but you know, this is going to be a little bit difficult to kind of search it down. And if you do click on a particular amino acid using a control click, you can actually use the arrow key to select, you know, different arrows. But I wanted to do something a little bit easier, and that is under going under tools, sequence, sequence. Uh, if your protein has multiple chains, another window might pop up asking you about which chain you want to look at. You can do both but usually the larger of the two chains is the one you want to look at. All right, so now that we have the sequence up here, we can now find the amino acids that are in the active site. So the first one we hear is uh, spartate, which is letter D at position 52. So I'm just going to, I just hold down the control key and click on it, just like when clicking on select something in the picture. And now we've uh, actually found the aspartate as being right there. You can see the little green highlighting, perhaps. All right, and the other amino acid we ha want to get is uh, glutamate 35, which is an E. So if I click on that one, it unclicks uh, the aspartate. So in order to click both of them, I need to do control, shift, and then click. And now I have both the D and the E selected corresponding to my active site here. So now that we have our two amino acids selected, uh, let's go ahead and color them red so they're a little bit easier to notice. And let's so show the uh, side chain atoms here. All right, so now that we have them, we can kind of zoom in on the active site. Uh, you know, sometimes you get a better view from behind. I think I'm going to approach the view from the front here. Um, I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to kind of zoom things in. And if I click on the scroll wheel, then it helps me shift. So if you have a scroll wheel mouse, uh, it's a little bit easier to use than a trackpad. So anyway, I've kind of aligned my two amino acids here in frame. The next thing I do is I like to open up a uh, side view, which is available under favorites. And then, you know, maybe this alpha helix in the back here is a little distracting. So we can kind of bring the slice and cut that out of frame. And now we have this beta sheet in front that's out of frame. And also it's kind of, because our amino acids are in back, it's kind of putting it in a white fog. So if we bring the front plane back in, uh, now we're really kind of focusing in on our two amino acids of interest. Maybe I can get rid of that other beta sheet behind. All right. So another fun thing is I'm going to clear the selection here. If it's like, what if I want to measure the distance between these two closest atoms here? So I'm going to do control click on this atom, and then I'm going to do shift control click on this atom, and I want to get the distance there. So, And the tool that you can use is under st tools, structural analysis, distances. All right, and the goal here is to select two atoms. So I'm going to select those two atoms again, control click, shift control click, uh, and now I can create the distance. One thing you want to set up is number of decimal places and the color of the line and the line width. Um, I've already set those things up in advance, so then I say create and save, oops, not save, just close, um, and then clear selection. So very cool. Now we have the distance, which is 5.52 angstroms uh, between these two things. Uh, additionally, this structure, the chymotrypsin that my students will be working on does not, but this structure actually has a ligand, so I can actually select structure ligand and then action show and then i'll show our ligand here um, i'm going to color it green so it's uh, easier to differentiate from the other atoms uh, clear selection to get rid of that little glow and now we can see our kind of our ligand here and if we wanted to i'm going to quit the uh, sequence part we could include the distance between the ligand uh, atoms as well i want to do that for some fun here of distances all right i'm going to now select this atom and that atom and create a distance 
and maybe this atom. Control click uh, will undo all the previous clicks. And then I do shift control click to select the second atom and create the distance there. So now we kind of have a nice little trifecta here. So it's clear selection again to get rid of that green halo. Oh, that's a pretty cool picture. All right. I do like to make my proteins a little less shiny, so let's work on that a little bit. Favorites side view gets us to that area, and then we go under light lighting. Uh, I typically like to lower the contrast, lower the brightness, uh, and then switch over to shininess, and lower the reflectivity down to, is a 0 0.1, we'll say. Increase the sharpness a little bit, then maybe flip back and kind of adjust the brightness and depthness contrast to yeah, your liking. Sometimes I've dropped the contrast almost down to zero. All right, so, so that's a nice thing here. Another time's effects, um, I do like to increase the silhouette width. That is this kind of that black outline around uh, your protein structure. Sometimes it's better without. I'm going to go with. All right, and that looks kind of like a nice picture here. Let's make it a little bit wider. All right. Center it a little bit better. All right, so now we can save our image. Save it to the desktop. I'm going to name it lysozyme.png. Save. So, again, my students are not required to do the distance thing. It's just kind of a fun addition. I may make them do it in the future. But now, voila, we've saved our image to our desktop here, opening it up. Uh, great. There's our nice image showing the distances. Anyway, so thanks for watching. I hope uh, to add more of these videos in the future. So if you're not one of my students, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button or maybe add a comment of the type of video you'd like to see for analyzing protein structures in the future. All right, thanks.